All right, now we're going to talk about uh, factoring quadratic expressions. What that means is it has an x squared term and then an x term and then like an integer term or number term or whatever. Now when I factor quadratics, it's pretty easy as long as you follow a few somewhat convoluted ways to get there. So uh, let me show you what a quadratic looks like first off. It looks like this. Uh, this is kind of a more, uh, I'm going to do some of the basic stuff in here, but this is more advanced uh, level in terms of uh, it has a number in front of the x squared. Generally, you start out with there's no number in front of x squared. Maybe I'll make another video about that one day, who knows. Anyway, the first thing that I need to do when I'm factoring quadratics or quadratic expression is pull out any common factors. So if a number goes into all three of the terms, obviously if it's a quadratic, it doesn't have an x that it can share. Or maybe it does, and it becomes a quadratic. So pull out any common factors that you have. So I'm going to look at my uh, paper here. I know that 3 goes into 9, and 15 also has 3 as a factor, but 4, no. So this one's pretty good. It's as far down as it can go. I don't have to pull out any common factors. We'll probably see a couple in just a few minutes. Uh, so factoring, uh, pull out any common factors is good for this one. The next one is to slide. Uh, we're going to do something called slide and divide. That's what most people call it. It really should be slide factor divide, but you know, factor doesn't rhyme, so I guess they kicked that part of it out. Now, um, when I do that, what I mean when I say slide is I'm going to take the first number in the set and I'm just going to circle it. And then I'm going to slide it over here. Now, as you can see, I'm also going to, uh, this is a multiply. So here I'm going to also slide over the uh, operation as well. So in the problem up here, I'm going to circle this 9 and I'm going to slide it over to this 4. Everything that I didn't move, I'm just going to bring down. So the x squared stays. That's good. Uh, 9 times 4 is 36. So now, as you can see, I, got, I moved that uh, integer in front of the x squared, so now I can do something with it. In order to get there, I have to factor it. Uh, and there's a little process to do that, and I'll have a little grid I'll show in a second. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at the second sign in the quadratic. Here's the second sign the one that's visible, obviously there's one here that you don't see, but I'm talking about visible signs. This is the second sign. This will tell me specifically in my answer whether the signs in the answer are going to be the same or different. So let me just show you this little graphic that I'd made up earlier. If in my, if in my second sign is positive, the answers that I'm going to get, so in this form, so it kind of looks like uh, polynomials that you probably did FOIL with earlier. If I have a plus, my answer signs are going to be the same. So they're either going to be plus or they're going to be minus. If the second sign is minus, then they're going to be different. That's the worst looking different ever, but it is different, I assure you. It's a different kind of different. Now, in my question here, my second sign is plus, which means, as you can see, the answer solution is going to be the same. The second step that I'm going to look at for factoring is looking at that first sign. The first sign is going to tell me what the actual, uh, op what the actual signs are. Are they both plus, minus, minus? So we saw in ours that that second sign was a plus. So I'm going to look at it and look at the first sign. The first sign in my uh, little situation here is plus. So the second sign is plus, the first sign is plus. So that means my factored answer is going to be x plus whatever the number is, and then x plus whatever else it is. I'm trying to help you set it up before you have to go through and mess with factoring out that second number. That's later on. I'd rather you set it up correctly, and it makes your life 50 times easier if you don't have to like fiddle with things for two hours. Um, for instance, uh, let's look at this one. This is a perfect example. In fact, da -da -da, it's the same exact question that we have there. My second sign is plus. Uh, my first sign is also plus, so my answer is going to be something in the realm of x plus something. I'm going to put something here eventually. I'm going to do that by factoring this number, you'll see. And x plus something else. Now, let's look at the first one that I'd written down down here. In this one, the second sign is plus. See? So that means the answers are the same. Then I have to go to that first sign, and it is minus. So that means, because this is plus and this is minus, both my signs are going to be minus. So 
x minus something or other, x minus something or other again. And for this one, if the second sign, the one I look at uh, initially is negative or a minus, I know that the signs are going to be different. And the order of them doesn't make any difference. So no matter what the first sign is, it's either going to be plus minus or minus plus. And guess what? It does not matter which one you write down before you factor things out. It matters what numbers you put after them, but it's irrelevant to what you write down. So I'm just going to do plus and minus. That's how I know what, uh, what it should look like when I set it up. If you have it set up correctly, the rest of it is simple. The next step that I need to do after I've got it set up, so by the way, since I did a factor for this, I'm going to go ahead and write down x plus something or other and x plus something or other else. The next step is to do a factor tree. Factor trees are pretty simple. I'm just going to do a factor list for 36. Here's my factor tree for 36. I've got 1 and 36, 2 and 18. By the way, if you're really bad at this, some people are just bad at it naturally. If you have a calculator, just do divide by 1. It always works. Then do 36 divided by 2. So the answer is 2, and then or you get 2, and you get an integer answer, no decimal. You get 18. So write down 2 and 18. You'll do 3. You'll get 12. You'll do 4 and get 9. You'll do 5 and get some weird decimal. So that's not a factor. But 6 is. You get 6 and 6. Now the next one to go down would be 7. But once they cross over, you're done. Those are all the factor lists. Now the last thing that we have to do is place the factors. And the nice thing about placing the factors is that if the signs are the same, I'm going to be looking at adding factors to find that middle number. If the signs are different, I'm dedicated to making different and look nicer. I'm going to subtract. And I paid for it by a crappy looking subtract. It is what it is. Now, what I mean by add and subtract is I'm going to look at the factors in these factor lists. And I'm only going to look at them in terms of rows. Now, these signs are the same, right? So that means that I'm going to find a group of these that add up to give me 15. Well, 1 plus 36 is 37, so that's not it. 18 plus 2, no. Now, 3 plus 12, that's perfect. That gives me 15, so I know my answer for that part is 3 and 12. And if you wanted to check your work, you could go back and do x times x is x squared x times 12 is 12x, 3 times x is 3x, so 12 plus 3x gives me 15x, and then 3 times 12 gives me 36. So that works it back out as, almost as far as I needed to go. This is a pretty long problem, right? So from there, my last thing, remember that I did the slide thing? Now I've got to do the divide thing. What the divide thing means is that I go back and divide each of these numbers by the original number. And if it gives me a nice fraction, I've got to do something else with it, but we'll look at that in just a second. So I circled the 9 here, which is very smart of me to do, because then it's easier for me to go back down and try to do this division. Now, I'm going to reduce those fractions down to give me x plus 1 third. Then I'm going to give me, uh, give myself, give me, good lord, that's pathetic uh, English. Sorry about that. 4 over 3. That's what it reduces as an improper fraction. Now, we're almost finished, I swear. The thing about this is you can't leave the fraction there. So go ahead and reduce that fraction down. But once you reduce the fraction, if it's not a whole number, if we were dividing by 3 on both of them, then we just have... Uh, if this had been a 3 originally and we got the same answer, we would get x plus 1 and we'd be good to go. And 12 divided by 3 is 4, so x plus 4 would be awesome. However, we l we're left with these fractions. We can't have that. So what we're going to have to do is bump slide this 3 that didn't work back up here. So it used to be 1 divided by 3. We've got to multiply that by 3 to get it back to the regular number. 
And if we multiply that by 3, we do that as well. But it just looks like we just slide it back up here. Three x plus one, three x plus four. It's a really simple process to do it. Um, so let's we'll do a couple examples, and then I think it'll be a lot clearer. That's just the long way to go about it. So a couple examples, I think everything will be smooth. As promised, we're going to do some examples. Uh, here's one: ten x squared plus forty three x plus twenty eight. Now, not a super difficult problem to do as long as you follow the rules. The first rule is to see if you can pull out any common factors. Well, 43 is a prime, so not looking good. 2 and 5, which go into 10, no. Uh, your first step, by the way, is to see if 10 goes into all of them, and it doesn't. So that's pretty much out. Common factors are done. Let's move on. So the next step would be slide. So I'm going to circle this 10 and slide it all the way over to this 28. This thing is going to look like a beast, but it's not that hard. Bring down this. Bring down this. 280. Now... Let's look at the signs to set up the problem. The second sign, in this case, is a plus, so that means both the signs are going to be the same. The first sign is also plus, so my answer is going to be in the form of x plus something and x plus something else. Now, that slide. And we've already picked the signs, uh, so we're factoring right now. Now we're going to have to do, we looked at both the signs, factor tree. So a factor tree for 280. It's ridiculous. 1 and 280. 2 and 140. Now thinking ahead, these are both the same signs, which means I'm going to add factors to get to 43. So I'm going to start in my head mentally thinking, can I add up to 43? Well, these don't, so I have to keep going. So I'm going to do 280 divided by 3. See, I did it in the calculator. It gave me that nasty fraction there. Well, it's decimal, but I mean, it's a fraction, really, because it's a repeating decimal. Uh, so that's not going to work. 70 plus 4 is 74, so that's not it. We're getting closer. Six doesn't work. We're getting right in the zone of doing it. Now mentally I know I have to add, so I'm going to check 35 plus 8. And look, it gives me 43. It's what it's supposed to be when I add them together. So these are my two factors. It doesn't matter what order you put them in, by the way. And the last step, since I slide and then I factored, now I have to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10. See, uh, this is what it would look like, but I need to reduce these fractions down into improper fraction form. So this becomes 8 is 4 over 5. The calculator, by the way, is going to be super tempted to give you a mixed number here. Do not allow it. If you have a fraction calculator, that is. Now, as you can see, these don't reduce down to whole numbers. So I'm going to have to just adjust and bump slide this 5x back over here. So 5x plus 4. Because to get rid of divide by 5, I have to multiply. So I have to multiply this by 5 too. That shows the uh, times. Uh, just slide the 2x over. And that's it. It's kind of long, but it's not difficult. Let's do another one. Assuming I can find it. Wouldn't that be nice? Hit it for myself. Uh, so this one I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. The first step, of course, is to factor out any common factors. And these absolutely have common factors. Uh, one of the biggest glaring common factors is 4. So I'm going to pull out a 4. Now from here, I think I'm as far down as I'm going to go because that 11 is kind of a daunting. So I need to, uh, I'm just going to put this 4 over here for a while and then come back to it later. Now I'm going to look at this 10x, uh, uh, 10x squared minus 11x minus 6. Can't have this. I'm going to slide it. 
So it becomes x squared minus 11x minus 60. Now, I'm going to start. I did the slide. It's time to factor. I'm going to look at that second sign. That second sign's minus. So the signs are going to be different. I don't have to worry about anything else. So I can pre-set up the fact that this is going to be x plus something and x minus something. I should also say, when the signs are different, after I make my factor list, I'm going to try to find two factors that when I subtract them, they give me 11x. The reason that I want to do that, by the way, is if I was doing the polynomials forward, like I was doing x times x is x squared, if this is minus and this is plus, when I combine like terms later, so say this was uh, negative 14 and this was um, 3 or whatever, that would give me negative 14x plus 3, which would leave me to negative 11. Obviously, those aren't factors of 60, but I'm just giving you the gist of why it works that way. So let's make a factor list for 60. 1 and 60, of course. 2 and 30. Uh, 3 and 20. Now, I'm thinking in my head already. These are different. Can I subtract and get 11? Not yet. 4 and 15. Oh, wait a minute. 15 minus 4 does give me the 11 I'm looking for. So this is going to be my factor set that I'm going to use. Now, I have to be smart. This is negative 11x. So since this is negative, the bigger number goes behind the minus. Because like I said, I want to do negative 15 plus 4, and that'll give me the negative 11 I want. So this looks like this. I'm almost done. Then I've done slide. I've done factor. I need to go back and divide. So I'm going to divide both by the 10. Like I said, leave this 4 till the very end. It'll come back to haunt us, but not so much as it's going to cause a huge problem. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. Uh, this reduced becomes 2 fifths. This reduced becomes 3 over 2. Looks crazy, right? See how this can happen? I've got to slide this over. Slide that over. Maybe one day it'll work out, who knows. Now, the only thing we have to remember is this whole thing was multiplied by 4, so I just pop that 4 right back out in front. That's the answer. Not a big deal. I'm going to do one more, hopefully somewhat quickly, and then that'll be it. Here's another one. This one's kind of a, a an odd look to it. Now, I know that 12 goes into 36, but I also know that it does not go into 62. So I'm going to think what goes into 12. Well, 6 goes into it, but doesn't go into 62. 4 goes into 12, but it doesn't go into 62, but 2 does. So I'm going to pull 2 out. That's as far down. Just do factors in your head of what goes into 12 to make sure you can pull something out. Obviously, they're all even numbers, so 2 is going to go in. This becomes 6r squared minus 31r, because remember, I divided by 2, and this becomes 18. Now, this 2, I'm going to leave it over here for a while and bring it right down to the bottom. That way, in case I forget, I can at least like try to get my teacher or whoever to like pretend like, oh, see, it was there, but you know, even though I forgot about it. Now, I'm at the, uh, I pulled out a common factor. These don't have any more. I'm going to slide, circle that 6, slide it over. It becomes r squared minus 31r, and 18 times 6 is 108. I get myself in these messes with gigantic numbers. Now, I'm ready to factor, so I'm going to look at signs. The second sign is the one I look at first. It says plus. The first sign says that it's minus, so the plus meant that they were the same. The minus meant they're both minus. So this is going to be r minus and r minus. What's very tempting to do is put different signs because these are different. The fact that they're different is almost completely irrelevant. Follow the system. If the second sign is plus, it's going to be the same. This one just tells you what it is. If this is minus, you can it's plus minus, it doesn't matter the order. Now, these are the same, which means I'm looking for factors of 108 that add up to 31 because they're the same, so you add them. So I'm going to make a 108 factor list, but I'm also going to be thinking in my head does it add up to 31? Because if it does, I'm finished. 1 and 108 after fixing the worst 8 ever.
Just so you know, I don't pre-prep any of this stuff out, so I am using calculator. It's not like I'm above it. It's not like people who work with math all the time are constantly sending there not using it for basic things. This is promising, isn't it? Because 108 divided by 4 gives me 27. So let's just add 27 and 4. Ah, oh, 31. That's what we're looking for. And since the signs are the same, it doesn't matter where you put them. Now I've got to make sure, now that I've done slide, I did the factor part. Now I've just got to do the divide part. So I divided by 6. And I need to make sure that I reduce those fractions down. This is 2 thirds. This, although looking very strange, will actually come out to reduce to, I believe, 9 over 2. Because 9 goes into 27 three times. Now, once again, failure on my part to put one in there that works out to a whole number. Like if this was just 2, say it had been 4 divided, or 8 divided by 6, or 12 divided by 6, and it gave me 2, you could stop. But in this case, it doesn't work out, so we have to re uh, slide it back again. 3r minus 2. Do this, 2r minus 9. And don't forget to bring your 2 back over in front, and that's your answer. It's not really difficult. It is kind of long. Sorry about that. Um, so hopefully this is helpful, and uh, there's a calculator method to do some of this. If you have multiple choice, just saying. Look around.